Check out the results from the exam. Yeah, this exam with hidden motives. The first place student didn't even have rescue points. Bakugo. He took down those faux villains like an ace. Yeah, I mean, he's really powerful. Examinees were running from the big obstacle. He stayed focused on letting the smaller targets get in close and then counterattacking. The guy's got grit. I guess he's smart, too. Not the first UA hopeful to take out that giant robot. Hmm? Would that be All Might? If you ask me, it's like his body isn't used to his quirk. I have a feeling I'm gonna like that character already. <laughs> Time for everyone's least favorite segment. <laughs> Introduction over analysis. I was thinking about the protagonist always having some hidden power, right? Deku is an exception in a way because he's not born with it, right? But still it's, you know, it's the protagonist with the ultimate power. And I used to hate that until I realized two things. One, just story-wise, I was thinking about it backwards. It's not that we're choosing a specific character and then that character happens to miraculously have this ability or be super lucky in some way. It's the other way around where actually that doesn't happen in the world typically. Almost no one has that, but story-wise, wouldn't we want to focus on the most interesting person in the world? And that would be that protagonist, right? It would be the one who, who does all the, the great things. And it makes sense looking at it that way because there are great people in the world who do great things. And so stories typically would focus on them. And secondly, and I think way more importantly, and also way more interestingly for me, none of what I said matters anyway because it's still relevant to everybody. If we're thinking about shows as a guide to life, all of us have hidden abilities particular to ourselves. But instead of superpowers, it's our innate abilities and the way we can apply them to the world. And instead of villains, it's just life, right? It's like obstacles whether it be external or internal. And actually, I think a lot of the superhero stories are explorations of values. This show is already, right? Just in a couple episodes. And so I think the question is, what values can we incubate that allow that realization of potential so that we can do great and heroic things, if that makes sense? Like I said at the beginning of the last Airbender series, I think we make a mistake watching these shows and not understanding the direct relevance to our own lives. Like we're all on a hero's journey. It's just that that hero's journey will be different in focus and scope person to person. But these feelings, the passion, the drive, the overcoming of challenges, the personal discovery, right? All of that that we find in these shows is available, directly available to us. And I think we're already aware of that on some level, which is why we enjoy these things in the first place. It's just that having the consciousness of that, for me, takes it to a whole level of fun, a whole new level of fun, where now I'm like actively engaged in shaping it. I can see it for the first time and I can make choices that allow me to facilitate these very things in my life. I did it again. I way overshot the intro. <laughs> That's how he says hello. He just spews blood on you. Way to blow my cover. Say it was a mistake. I was just kidding. Here. <laughs> Subtle acting there. Very nice. <sighs> what did she say? We all want All Might's autograph. Well, this is All Might, and we know how he handles autographs, so you may already have one. Just check your notebook or something, or your wallet, or maybe even a body part. Who knows? Congrats on getting What does it mean? I couldn't have done it without your help. That is 100% accurate. I didn't tell anyone at UA that I've been training you or anything. I wasn't one of the judges and I didn't pull any strings for you. Healthy distance is good, I think. Hoping to master it right away is like asking a baby to run a marathon. You still have to go through the process of learning how to walk. Yeah. Wait, you knew I was going to get hurt that badly? Well, he did warn you that your limbs would get ripped off. But it turned out all right. And he told you to clench your butt cheeks and I don't I don't think you did. Just saying. The torch I passed on to you is but a small flame right now. In time, it will be kindled. <laughs> you wield a raging inferno. The more powerful you become, the more you'll outshine me. Eventually, I'll retire. My job complete. Man, I love how All Might speaks in these beautiful metaphors. It's so great. Episode 5, what I can do for now. And I feel like there's something more here. I feel like there's another side of this, which is pain, that we haven't really seen yet. You know, I feel like he's getting old or he's going to lose his powers as a result or worse, he might he might die. I just suspect that this is not the full story. It's not as simple as like just giving Deku the powers and everyone lives happily ever after. But that aside, or maybe even that enhancing this, I love the the humility and acceptance All Might shows with passing the torch, you know? Some people in that position would have a really hard time with that. I feel like it's similar to feelings like acknowledging the fact that you're aging or getting older or being at the top of something and then realizing that younger people are about to replace you, you know, or adapt in new ways that, that you, never, you never could. I think it takes an amazing amount of insight and wisdom to recognize the inevitability of change. For Deku, it's all just good times, right? But I bet for All Might, he's processing some things, but this doesn't feel fake. You know, it feels genuine, like he actually has come to terms with it on some level, although I, I really do think there's more. Deep stuff is right. Izuka, April. You're all set? Yeah. Are you sure? You didn't just pack action figures, right? I have everything. Now I gotta go. I'm really proud of you, son. Aw. 
I began my high school career. I remember my first day of high school. It was mostly uneventful. Except that some seniors cornered me and they told me I would have to fight other freshmen at the park that Friday. And they gave us all Pokemon names. I never showed up, but... In hindsight, I wish I had. That would've been interesting. The most promising students in the country are waiting behind this door. <sighs> Maybe we're in different classes. Maybe everyone in here is nice. Yeah. <laughs> In high school, I'm sure everyone is nice, yeah. You're already disrespecting this academy by scuffing school This guy. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna love him eventually, but... Your old school put a stick up your ass? Or were you born with it? At least they're focused on each other and not Deku. Good morning! My name is Tenya Ida. Yeah, I, I know! <laughs> the way he walks through. I'm Izuku Midoriya. He just carries that stick through his whole body. I admit, as a student, you're far superior to me. Um, He's so in his own head. Very intense. Yeah, is that messed up hair? And that plain face. It's that nice girl who talked to me. She looks good in that uniform. Alright, calm down. Take it easy. What? I can't believe we have not one but two students from our school heading off to UA. And to think you're one of them, Midoriya, it's a miracle. What a thing to say from a teacher. I'm supposed to be the first and only student from this crappy school to get into UA. But you had to go and screw that all up! I WARNED YOU NOT TO APPLY! I feel like so much of anime takes place in alleyways. Is that what Japan is like? Like it or not, you can't stop me! I'm gonna ruin that little bastard. Now nah, you're gonna be best friends. <laughs> if you're just here to make friends, then you can pack up your stuff now. <gasps> is this her teacher? Your teacher. <gasps> yeah! <laughs> Right, let's get to it. Put these on and head outside. But orientation, we're gonna miss it. If you really want to make the big leagues, you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies. <laughs> I like this guy already. Here at UA, we're not tethered to traditions. That means that I get to run my class however I see fit. Ooh, I like this guy as a teacher too. This is awesome. You've been taking standardized tests most of your lives. But you never got to use your quirks and physical exams before. I don't know how I didn't see this coming, but I feel like this is gonna bring up a lot of stuff from my time as a teacher. The show literally has Academy uh, in the name. This is my style. <laughs> this is my style of teaching. To a fault. I think actually I piss off the students. I have like a chip on my shoulder from when I was a student, so I think I overdo it as a teacher. I'm like, none of your traditions matter. Throw everything you know out the window. Homework? Forget it. <laughs> What we're gonna do in class is gonna be directly useful and relevant to your actual daily life. And one thing I find funny about that is that some kids love it, but they're actually kids who hate it. They're like, can we just do a test? <laughs> you know, like, can we just have homework, please? Just shut up. <laughs> there are a lot of flaws to that approach as well. I really think that there's no perfect way of teaching. I think ultimately a lot of it comes down to the teacher's intentions, like how much they actually care about the students, how clear their goal is at least, how much they listen, how much they are aware of the impact of what they're doing and like how adjustable they are, not being stuck to procedure for procedure's sake. This guy, I feel like he gets it. I'm sure he has flaws, but at least he's thinking practically. That's great. One of my pet peeves in the profession is that you meet a lot of people who are just in love with teaching. You know what I mean? It's not really student focused. It's just I'm the teacher and this is what teachers do. It's disconnected or removed from actual utility and value, which is the whole point, right? In my opinion, it's like providing people with, with value. You also get a lot of people who posture, you know, who are there as an ego thing to exert authority. And there is a certain amount of authority that's important for maintenance, but I dislike seeing people value authority for the enjoyment of what that authority gives them, if that makes sense. So this guy, I feel like he's a maverick, he's cool. And I think it speaks well of the school that they would allow this, you know, that they'd, they'd allow different teaching styles as long as the teacher obviously has the student's interest in mind. You know what I mean? I feel like that that is a nice education if you have like a, a combination of these, these elements. What was your farthest distance throw with a softball when you were in junior high? 67 meters, I think. Right. Try doing it with your quirk. That was more than 67 meters. You have three years here to become a hero. You think it's all gonna be games and playtime? This guy's seen some stuff. Today you'll compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Whoever comes in last has none and will be expelled immediately. What? What kind of school is this? Oh, crappy got Aizawa. <laughs> oh no. I feel like this guy represents an exploration of one of the themes of the show, which is meritocracy. The cold hard truth of not everyone being born equal and objectively measuring abilities. He's like to an extreme of that, right? It'll be interesting to see where he goes. Even if it wasn't the first day, that isn't fair. She's oh, very principled and outspoken. A power hungry villains? Hmm? <laughs> the cruelty of life. UA will throw one terrible hardship after another at you. So go beyond. Plus ultra style. 
plus ultra. What is his quirk speed? At 50 meters, I can only get up to third gear. <laughs> only third gear. As you can see, his legs are oh right, right, right. He has engines. That helps. His other quirk is having an opinion about everything. Oh, Chaco Ura Raka. <laughs> nice attempts, mon ami. But you're just not showing enough panache. What is this guy saying? I can't understand a word of his dialogue. Shooting my beautiful beam for more than a second hurts my tummy. Ugh. Testing the upper limits of their powers helps me assess their room for growth. It becomes clear what they can and can't do, their true potential. Yeah, so he obviously has a little bit of a blind spot, right? He's not Sometimes not taking into full account of who they are. To be creative in order to succeed. But it still has its use. I feel like it would be a mistake if this was their only teacher now and forever, or their only influence, but as someone who pushes their limits, he seems legit. I kind of like this tough love style. And he's got the Zuko jets. So what do I do? I've got a ton of power, but I can only use it once, and it'll break me. Do what you can do for now. I'm talking about the Russian side. You must have felt it coursing through you. What was it like? Like an egg about to explode in a microwave. <laughs> That's pretty boring, but okay. <laughs> Control over one for all isn't gonna happen overnight, but you'll nail it one day. You just gotta keep trying. What I'm interested to see is how the teacher reacts to this, because it could go a bunch of different ways. I suspect he's gonna, you know, be more understanding than he seems. Don't think about your limbs ripping off. Don't think about your limbs ripping off. I mean, they all have powers, but they're all like really creative in figuring out how they can use them. Well done. Infinity? Unmeasurable. All that's left is this. The distance run, sit-ups, and the seated toe touch. It's now or never. Sit-ups you can do. Here it comes. You too can become a hero. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like the teacher, this is deliberate. He knows stuff. He's looking for something specific. Did he just neutralize his power? Is that what happened? The judges for this exam were not rational enough. Someone like you should never be allowed to enroll at this school. <gasps> no, you're breaking my heart. You can look at someone and cancel out their powers. That's a really useful quirk. You're not ready. You don't have control over your power. <gasps> It's not totally wrong about that. No, that's not what I was trying to do. He also can control toilet paper. You have the same reckless passion as another overzealous hero I know. <laughs> oh, they got beef. I wonder if our teacher gave him some so advice. He probably told him to start packing. I'm here. Shetty. Wait, who are you again? <laughs> and what are you saying? <laughs> if I can't control my quirk, there's no way I'll ever become a hero. Hey, hey, is he for real? What is he doing? One finger. So that showed control at least, right? He didn't rip his arm off. Well, it's not infinite, but pretty good. Mr. Aizawa, I'm still standing. <laughs> this kid. You knew you had to use one for all, but not at full power or else you'd be KO. So you propelled the ball, the last possible point of contact, by sending the power of your- Yeah, we got it. We don't need the exposition. <laughs> that was pretty clear. Uh, anime. Anime has a lot of baggage. Hey, all my respect. I like it. Sayonara. Interesting. Man, this teacher is intriguing. Maybe I was too quick to make assumptions about him. But after finishing the episode, my guess is that that was a test. Maybe he actually would have kicked out Deku. But I think he was hopeful that it would turn out this way. I think he actually values potential. And I think he actually does want the kids to succeed and would be concerned if there was somebody who was not suitable or not capable because that could do more harm than good right but i don't think he's being intentionally cruel or hateful he has a very clear philosophy that does seem to have its limits but at least you know he has one and he abides by it and he holds the students to that standard so for me i feel like i would really get a lot out of his class as someone who thinks similarly and doesn't like fluff and ceremony and just wants to get to it you know wants to get to the the good stuff 
It's funny though, because what Deku just showed is not that kind of measurable success that he's talking about. It wasn't the meters, right? It wasn't the meters of the ball. It was Deku being quick on the fly, being able to adapt, proving himself, proving his grit and determination. So there's more to this teacher's beliefs than meets the eye. Are all episodes going to be like this? I can watch the show. <laughs> I can watch it. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. At some point, there's going to be a threat, right? Like a villainous threat. And at that point, they're going to go out into the world. But I'm guessing that will take place simultaneously with their their academic career. I mean, it's called My Hero Academia, right? So that must be sort of the, the baseline of the show, at least for a while. And I don't know if that's true or for how long that's true, but if so, that's that's a great choice because the school element of it is so much fun. One thing that initially scared me about the show is that there are obviously gonna be so many characters, but if they're interesting, if they provide some kind of like intriguing philosophical or value question or distinct personalities then then it's great and i think it has a lot of potential so yeah we'll have to see but that's the end of episode five what's next i don't even know more school probably more school